Hi guys, this is Zach from Watches On You, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a very unique watch. I'm going to be looking at the Omega Speedmaster Mark II. So now, let's go down to the table and get a look at it. Okay guys, here's the watch in greater detail, and right away I'm going to go over this watch's 42.4mm stainless steel case. Now the case is extremely high quality, I like how it has both polishing and brushing, but as you can see the shape of it is very, very interesting, as there are no lugs to be seen on the case, except underneath you can see where they are, right there, But and it just kind of has this very nice... This, very large sloping edge leading up to the perfectly flat sapphire crystal. And that's just the. I, there are really no watches that look like this. It's one of the most unique cases out there. And so now I'm going to move on to the bracelet. Now the bracelet is extremely high quality as well. It's stainless steel. I love the thickness of it because it's the perfect thickness to where it feels a very high quality, but yet it's not so thick that it gets a bit obnoxious like some other watches do. And, it al and also the clasp is extremely high quality. It is a bit thick, especially compared to the bracelet, but it is very made very, very well, and it's kind of nice that it's thick, because then they were able to put in a micro-adjust, sorry for the focus there, where you just push right there, locks down, you can push it back in, intermediate spaces there and it just all fits very well very smooth extremely easy to use you have this nice engraved Omega logo it just all is made very well it feels very hefty in the hand honestly I would compare this to the feel of like a stainless steel sports Rolex it really has that nice heft to it and it looks great so moving on to the dial now this is the black dial configuration and there are some others. There was the gray with accents of orange and then there was actually this one which was made for the Rio Olympic Games but there's actually no way to notice that it was made for the Rio Olympic Games unless you see the case back. Now this is a very intriguing one because it real like the other Rio limited editions that were made had all the Olympic colors on. They had some green, yellow, reds on them. This one they just changed the sub dials, as you can see, and there'd really be no difference. I was actually looking at this with the jeweler, and they didn't know that this was Rio when it was in the case because there is really no way to tell. So that's one of the things. And actually, there's the one other way you can tell is the bracelet's a bit different as it has a polished center link. But other than that, there's really nothing relating this to the Olympic Games. So, I digress. But moving back to the watch at hand, the dial is, as you can see, you got a lot going on. You have this nice tachymeter right going around, you have these three sub-dials, and everything just looks very 70s. You can see on the seconds track, they're kind of alternating gray patterns there. It just, it all looks very, very unique and cool. So now I'll demonstrate the chronograph. So to start it, you just do the top pusher. Now this watch is a, uses a coaxial chronograph movement, which is Omega's proprietary escapement, and this has a column wheel chronograph movement, which just shows that the movement's a bit more complicated, and that just adds to the quality of the piece. Now the exact movement number is Omega 3330, uh, their mo that movement, and it is an automatic winding caliber with, as I said, a calm wheel and coaxial escapement. It also has a power resistance of 52 hours. So now I'll stop the chronograph and reset it. Now the, there, I'll let you listen to it. There. Now the action on this is very, very nice. You don't have to put too much pressure on each of these. It's just, it, it's very flowy and it just feels very nice in the hand. Now you also now I'll explain the subdials. So on the left here you have your running seconds. On the right you have your 30 minute counter, and then down at six o'clock you have a date wheel in the middle of the subdial, and then you have your hour counter for the chronograph as well. And that's just very useful for timing many different things. It, is, it has the different capabilities of tracking both minutes and hours. So now the watch on the wrist, it is a bit large as the case does make it quite thick. It's not overwhelming, it's nothing like a deep sea or anything. It has some heft to it, but it's not too bad. My wrist is a seven inch size, so just know that for reference. It's a bit above average. And the 42 millimeter case size, I really like it. I would say it wears a bit larger, 
but I think that the 42 millimeters is great. As I, you may know if you watch my other videos, 40 millimeters is my favorite, so 42 by all means is definitely acceptable. And it just fits very nice. The bracelet's extremely comfortable. As you can see, it's kind of like a Rolex President bracelet where it has just a ton of links, which just adds to the bendability and flexibility of the strap. So. Overall, this watch is made just extremely well. I really like it. If you're looking for a cool heritage piece that really no one else has, I think this is a great option as I personally have never seen someone in public wearing this watch. And it's just, it's very, very unique. And if that's what you're looking for, this watch is perfect. It retails here at JB Hudson, brand new for $62.50. And that price, being that it is an in-house column wheel chronograph with a coaxial escapement, I think that's a pretty good deal. And the overall quality here is just absolutely fantastic. So, thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe and share. Thank you.